My name is Matthias Hebrock. Uh, I am currently in San Francisco and there I'm running the uh, Diabetes Centrum at the University of California, San Francisco. So this, this is a really interesting congress. It only happens every two years or so and it really brings together all of the experts in, in beta cell biology. It's a fantastic place to, to see old friends and to hear about the things that have been developing over the last two years. Often information and, and data and findings that have not been published so it's really important that you go to the meeting and actually listen to what your colleagues have to say. There's a lot of things that are really exciting that we have right now in the in the field of beta cells of course have to do with the fact that we're getting close and generating beta cells from human stem cells which means for the first time ever we're getting close to generating as many of the beta cells that we want and then we can use them for, for, for purposes of study but we can also use them for the purpose hopefully of cell therapy putting them into diabetic patients. There's tons of other things that are going on right now that are really really exciting. For example we're learning that a beta cell is not just a beta cell, meaning that in, in many cases the beta cell essentially is uh, a, a subtype, we call the subtypes, we mean that they are slightly different from each other and they potentially have different kind of functions. So we're learning this right now, we're analyzing this and this is something that is also is, is unbelievably exciting. The other thing that we're learning more and more is that the functionality of the beta cell changes over time, that uh, a juvenile, so a cell that is, is young, is in its functionality slightly different than an, an old cell and that has to do with the way it responds to a uh, level of sugar that is in the blood but also in terms of how it can regenerate and how it can make more of itself. So we, we're essentially gaining insights now into beta cell biology that, that are unmatched and these kind of things are, are really exciting and uh, going forward. So what we're doing today is or right now in the laboratory is we're trying to understand how we can generate beta cells, really fully functional beta cells from human stem cells. And again, the idea behind this is that we've never really studied a human beta cell. It sits in our body, it actually sits close to our vertebrae in the back of our body and we really can't access the cell. We can't look at it, we can't image it and we really don't know how it functions and how it changes. And so by being able to use stem cells, we can make as many as we want out of those cells, and then turn them into beta cells. That allows us to look at them, to study their functionality, but also to change them, to make them more robust, or make them more healthy, or make them expand. And all of this leads to uh, abilities for us to go into drug screening, but also into cell therapy. Over the last several years, actually a decade or so now, people have tried to generate beta cells from stem cells. It's, it's, it's a process that is complicated. It happens actually when we are uh, an embryo in, in, in the body of our mothers and it goes through a number of different steps. It takes many, many weeks in, 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 in the embryo and we're trying to replicate this um, under cell culture conditions and we've come a long way. I think we are almost there in, in generating these kind of beta cells from, from stem cells probably at the, at the very last stages and I'm very hopeful that this will be accomplished soon. The work that we're doing is in nature, in basic. What I mean by that is we don't directly work with material that go directly into the clinic. But I think that for medical professionals and physicians, people who are seeing patients, they should understand that research, basic research, has made such huge leaps over the last several years that we're now getting to the point that we will be able to generate cells that can be used as surrogates for beta cells. What I mean by that is in type 1 and type 2 diabetic patients, certainly at the end of their disease, beta cells lose their functionality. They just don't have enough, so they have to inject themselves with insulin. I can envision a time point where we would take those patients and give them the cells that we're generating from stem cells, and these stem cell-derived beta cells will essentially then take over and function hopefully identical to the ones, the, one, the beta cells that they had before. Over the last several years we've learned something that is astonishing. In type 1 diabetes the idea is that the immune system actually destroys our beta cells and as many of you know if you have usually an infection the immune system is so efficient it gets rid of, of the bacteria in, in no time, a day, uh, 10 days or so. Now what we are learning is 
that uh, against expectations in type 1 diabetic patients, it appears to be that some of the beta cells are still there. What that means is that the immune system is not behaving exactly the same way as it would do with a, or during a bacterial infection. We don't understand this. We don't understand if some of the cells that produce insulin are beta cells that are residing still in type 1 diabetic patients if they are slightly different or if the immune system at some point just gets bored and moves away. These are things that lots of people would like to understand because, of course, if we understand the mechanism behind this, the idea would be that we can hopefully tell the immune system to stop the assault and then the remaining beta cells might actually be able to still, again, restore normal sugar levels in these patients. I'm not a physician by training, so I don't see patients. I have to be careful when I talk about medications. But there are, of course, some medications like metformin, for example, or the SGL2 inhibitors that are coming out right now that reduce, in, in a way, the, the sugar load in terms of the SGL2, which allow sugar to leave through the kidneys. And therefore, they reduce the, the level of sugar that is in the blood. Or metformin, which also seems to spare the beta cells and reduce the sugar that is present in the system by likely affecting the liver and the activity of the liver to take up sugar. And so the idea behind all of this is that you give the, the beta cells a reprieve. What I mean by that is that they don't have to work as hard if the sugar that is in the blood is at lower levels. So there are medications that exist that hopefully will be able to lead to a reduction of sugar levels and therefore help beta cells to stay healthy for a longer period of time. This is a very interesting question that I don't think we have fully understood. Why do young children, when they're diagnosed with type 1 diabetes, progress so quickly, whereas people at an older age, and actually you can get type 1 diabetes even in your 40s and 50s and potentially even longer. And why does it take longer in these older patients to lose the control and the, and the level of, of uh, sugar control? We don't, we don't fully understand this. Uh, it could be that, of course, the beta cells, when they're young, are slightly different. They are what we call juvenile in nature. They have slightly different functionalities. They probably also have a slightly different uh, stage. And they possibly age. And during this aging process, they seem to be becoming more mature. On the other hand, the immune system also might be at an early age just more active and therefore more ready to really destruct the beta cells. These are really important questions that need to be addressed and that as lots of groups are working on this. Type 2 diabetes is different from type 1 in a way that the immune system is not as engaged as is in type 1. There might be a contribution, but it's much less compared to the type 1 case. So what happens in type 2 often is what we call is an exhaustion of the beta cell. They just need to produce too much insulin because the sugar levels seem to be spiking up higher. Often this goes hand in hand with uh, obesity where you have an increase in fat cells in your body when you get older and by doing that the fat unfortunately does not respond to insulin the way that for example muscle would do. And so over time beta cells are working just too hard and when they're working too hard for too long they get exhausted and when they get exhausted they actually might either die or they might by something that we also don't fully understand just turn down the functionality we would call this a de-differentiation. So they are still beta cells, but they are non-functional beta cells. And if the process or the, the period of too high sugars extend too long, then these cells at some point will also die. <laughs>